Hello, hard video, all this stuff, welcome back. I'm sure you are aware that Sony's A7S line has been the undisputed king of low light video for a few years now. But have you ever wondered just how good it actually is at shooting in low light? I know it's changed the way that I shoot video, but I wanna know, firstly, just how much can you actually push its limits before you get unacceptable, noisy looking footage? Secondly, just how far has the tech advanced since the first breakthrough full frame DSLRs for video, arguably the Canon 5D Mark II? And thirdly, what the best Sony shooting mode for low light, low light is? Plus, I'll chuck in a couple of my tips for shooting in low light with the A7S line and what you can do after shooting to improve things even further. Let's get into it. I hope you find it interesting and fun. And if you do and you wanna make me smile, consider supporting the channel and hitting my subscribe button, or you can click the magic link in the description below. Appreciated, kind sir. I'm filming this section on a phone. It's actually an iPhone 7 Plus, just to show you how dark it is. It looks incredibly grainy. It's a really dark room. The only thing illuminating me here is a little bit of light from the other room, natural light, no, no, uh, no lighting in the room at all and I guess just the monitor, which is on top of my camera. So firstly, I want to establish what's gonna be best for shooting in low light. Either a standard profile like Cine 1, or a log profile like S-Log 2. I'll start with Cine 1 and then really push the ISO and then we'll try log and see if it's any better. In this first example, you can see I'm using F1.4 due to the razor thin depth of field. Next, I've stopped down to F4, which is obviously three stops darker from f1.4 to f2 to f2.8 to f4. But notice the ISO. In the previous clip we were using 6400 ISO and in this one we're using 25600. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that the f numbers, you know, which determine aperture on your lenses, definitely don't accurately tell us anything about light transmission and also that the ISO values on our cameras are absolute nonsense. Now going to f8, and I would say this is at the stage where I am not happy with the way that this image looks. In the last clip, I would have been just about happy with the amount of noise. In this one, I would say it's unacceptable. Just to make absolutely certain, I've gone to f11 and ISO 160,000, and yep, I was right, yeah, definitely not happy with this. <laughs> It looks horrible, we've lost a lot of colour information and it's very, very noisy. I hope you can see this on YouTube. Looking at them side by side, ISO 6400 is completely clean. I'd use it happily any day of the week. ISO 25600, again, acceptable I'd say. The noise looks a little bit like film grain, which is lovely. And the colour information is intact. Anything higher than that, I'd be looking to use noise reduction software, which obviously isn't ideal. So what can we take away from this so far? Well, the sweet spot is definitely less than 25,600. We definitely want to stay below 80,000 ISO and keep your noise reduction software on standby. My favorite is Neat Video, it's linked below. But what about log? So for this example, I'm using S-Log2 and the thing is with S-Log is you always have to use much, much higher ISO values. So I'm starting at 25,600 and of course, as it's log, it's gonna need a bit of a grade before we take a good look at it. So I'm just gonna make a couple of grading tweaks and apply the Phantom Lutz Neutral Lookup Table, which is a really, really good and fairly natural looking um, lookup table. And um, of course, they're linked below as well if you're interested. Now at F4, and we're already using 80,000 ISO. If you remember with the Cine 1 example, at F4, we were using ISO 25,600. The base ISO for log, on the A7S II is actually 1600, but you should really treat it a lot more like ISO 400. At F8, I've had to go all the way up to ISO 320,000, and yes, this has gone way, way beyond what I would call acceptable. The color has degraded significantly in our footage and we're getting a lot of noise. When we look at them side by side, I'm very happy with the ISO 25,600 and maybe even the ISO 80,000 version. But in this case, it's not the ISO values that are important. Remember, the example on the left was shot at f1.4, the one in the middle at f4, and at the end at f8. So really, we should be comparing the two F8 examples from Cine 1 and S-Log 2. And when we do, we can see a huge, huge difference in quality. The huge difference in noise levels and color have me convinced that whilst you can use much higher ISO values with S-Log 2 and 3, I'm convinced that Cine 1, Cine 2, etc. are the way to go 
for shooting in low light conditions. So what can we take away from this? Well, of course, with Log, the sweet spot is your camera's base ISO, and it's particularly important with S-Log 2 and 3. With Log, you can push the ISOs a little bit higher, but I wouldn't go over 80,000 personally. But the underlying message here is that I would recommend you actually use Cine 1 or equivalent for low light scenes. But what about skin tones? At what point do these high ISOs start to degrade the quality of your skin tones? So here we have a well-lit scene uh, using a particularly flattering light, the Aperture C300 and the big light dome. Obviously it looks squeaky clean at Cine One's base ISO of 200. Now at f8 and ISO 640 and you may notice that the aperture has increased by two stops but the ISO hasn't. Yet again proving that ISO values and f-stops are pretty unhelpful for this test. At f16 and ISO 2500 I'm pretty happy with the skin tone still, I'd happily push it even further. At f32 and ISO 8000 I'm noticing a little bit of degradation in the colour. To challenge the camera even more, I've had to up my shutter speed to a 200th of a second and now I can notice quite a lot of noise and we've lost even more colour and I would say at this point I'm not that happy with the skin tones. Just to be certain, I've upped my shutter speed again to an 800th of a second and wow, yes, no, it's, it's no, no, just no. So we know that the A7S line are good in low light. But just how far has the tech advanced? I shot this clip with my old Canon 5D Mark II and that's a camera that was released in November of 2008. I used ISO 100 and f1.4. When we bring the ISO up to it, the camera's maximum, which is 6400, you can see that it's very noisy, but in fairness, this is a little more than the eye can see. Now looking at footage from the A7S II and this is at the same ISO of 100. When we look at them side by side there is a noticeable difference but bear in mind that you know ISO values are considered largely useless between different manufacturers and of course the Sony is shooting in 4K. So yes this is a very unfair test and actually doesn't really demonstrate how far the technology has advanced. Instead let's look again at this clip, the maximum ISO clip from the Canon 5D Mark II and let's compare it to ISO 6400 on the Sony. It looks like this. So the noise levels at 6400 on both cameras, the difference is absolutely crazy. And really with the Sony, there's barely any noise at all. In fact, this is exposed brightly, too brightly I'd say. And actually this is just entering the ballpark of what the Sony can achieve. This is the Sony exposed at ISO 10,000 and this is brighter than we would ever need to expose a scene like this. When we bring the exposure down in post, it looks like this, extremely clean. Um, I reckon you could push this even further with no problems at all. So here are my low light tips to take away. Large sensor cameras will always collect more light. They have a larger surface area and therefore you will get cleaner footage. The same goes for large aperture lenses. Quite obviously they let more light in so you will get cleaner footage in low light. You can slow your shutter speed just a little bit. Not too much obviously and it works better with slower moving subjects, but it is possible. And never rule out using noise reduction software like Neat Video, which is my favourite. It's amazing software and it's really not a sin to use it. It's linked below and it's a must buy, go and check it out. Of course I'd be curious to know if you think that any camera on the market at the moment comes close to this. Please let me know in the comments section below. And how much are you guys looking forward to the A7S III? How much do you think it will advance? Let me know. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about video on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this one for you. And my latest upload will be just underneath. If you're not already subscribed, then definitely do it. Hit the blob on this side. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot a better video. See you guys.